Hello everybody, and uh, <laughs> welcome to this video, I guess. Can we just talk about this music video that was dropped by Pokemon during the presentation of the new DLC? And now, I gotta say, basically, I don't really care about the DLC. I've cared about it as much as I did the previous DLC. The, the Tundra looks a lot better, but honestly, it's... Uh, it's Sun or Sun and Moon. It's Sword and Shield, so I get about as excited as I can. But when they dropped this music video made made by Pump of Chicken, I was like blown away. The animation was gorgeous. The music was pretty good as well, and the lyrics were quite interesting. And basically, I just really wanted to talk about it. I recorded a whole video of me analyzing and going through every single line and scene and talking about every single little detail that I thought was relevant. And it kind of got to a point where it was a little bit cringy, a little bit too scripted and a little bit school essay type, you know, where I went, this is like this. They use this word and it makes it seem like there's a connection here. So it kind of got a little bit boring. So I want to try maybe a more off the cuff, less scripted. And that's probably going to have me go um and ooh a little bit more. So I'm going to probably have to cut that out. But hopefully it doesn't sound super over edited and hopefully this doesn't sound too scripted. I just want to talk about this because this is my favorite thing that Pokemon has dropped, period, this year. Over Sword and Shield, over the DLC over the shows, like everything, the movies, the card game, I, this is my favorite thing they dropped because it's just, it's a combination of like everything. It's, it's that thing that you, that gets you hyped whenever they show you all the, all the past generations with these generations, it gives you this like, man, like we've made it this far. So I want to talk about this and, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy and hopefully this ends up coming out and I don't find this completely cringe. And hopefully you guys don't find it completely cringe, but let's get into it. <laughs> so it starts off basically with the old fashioned pixel artist, pixel art esque style of the Game Boy, original Game Boy Pokemon games, really just kind of establishing that this is the beginning of our story. And this whole video is really about a journey throughout all the generations of Pokemon, a journey through life, and just like a journey through exploring and that's really what pokemon is all about is a journey every single game is your journey and that's what i think is really captured in this song and in this video it even starts off with four guys going on their own journey down some railroad tracks in real life so it's it has this connection throughout the entire video of a journey and it's it's just really great <laughs> and then we get into this sort of slideshow of these two characters lives who honestly i adore they're so fun I want to be, <laughs> I personally strive to be a little bit more like the girl in this, uh, this video and a lot less like the guy, because I am very much like the guy in his, uh, in how he emotes and his, uh, impressions. One very kind of angry, bored guy and one very happy, cheerful girl. So it's very, very contrasting and very fun. Something interesting I noticed in between these two is that... Much like Pokemon, there is a lack of a father in many of the main characters' stories. I really think that only... I think only in Gen 3 you have a father, and then I think in Gen... I feel like in Sun and Moon you have mention of your dad, but it's not really a base in story. There is a point, a scene where the, the boy is in this alternate dimension and someone's sitting on the couch, and initially I thought that was maybe their, just their friend, but now I want to almost kind of speculate that it's their mom. So I don't know if it, if that is per se, but you don't notice any guys. And the girl even has a little bit in one of her photos of uh, her mom holding her as a baby. So we start off with them going on their adventure. And uh, first off, we have the girl skipping along, very happy, just chilling. Then her Eevee obviously not caring as much as, even though it gets shot by lightning, put on fire, gets frozen and almost run over by a boulder. And then the guy more or less just kind of trudges through the journey, a little less enthusiastic. And you notice behind that they go through each gym leader and elite four member by their type, the background. I think that's more symbolic of us going through each generation and each region and fighting the type specific gym leaders so i found that quite interesting that they would put that there in a background that wasn't really filled with anything it was just a sky and they happened to choose to put a box around as they go through and i think that has some sort of significance uh, as we jump start 
past everything, we get these like crazy silhouettes of the the legendaries spinning around and it, it's just such a cool visual a lot of things happen very fast that you don't really notice your first time around and this is why i've watched this video so many times i'm absolutely obsessed with it every time i notice something new and i want to mention it so <laughs> even now i'm watching it again just to see if i miss anything and it's a really cool visual of this spinning and this specifically has a really interesting line where where in the song it says, that day I found you, you found me too. And I found this line to be kind of significant where, and interesting because I think if you look at it as face value, it's like, oh, I found you, you found me too. Like sort of maybe like a love connection, a friendship, depending on if you want to look at it, the boy and the girl meeting, it's a love connection. Maybe it's the, the Pokemon partner and their trainer, that sort of friendship. But I see it as this more ominous uh, setting where, the half of it is, I found you, which the trainer found the legendaries that are swirling around them, they found them, and you found me too, as the silhouettes of the legendaries switch into the silhouettes of every single villain we've seen so far, essentially, in the Pokemon games, there are a lot of major ones. And so I took that more as a, I found you, I found the legendary Pokemon, and now you found me too, because I found that legendary, now I've gotten the eyes of the evil team so you guys have also found me and so i found that kind of interesting and ominous an interesting line with the visuals i felt like there had to be some sort of significance there i don't think they would have just put that there for no reason honestly going through this the person who made the animation it's either the animation was made and the song was made for it or the song was made and the animation was made for the song and i think the latter is obviously uh, more likely, and whoever made this animation really knows what they were doing. Like, whoever d directed it and designed it, they knew what they were doing with the visuals. They're very, very good. And now we actually get to this point where the main characters, the two main characters of our story, the one with the Pikachu and the Eevee we meet, uh, discover each other's partner Pokemon. So the two of them have to try and kind of find each other and return their partner Pokemon. This also starts this kind of dynamic of the male and the female characters in each of the generations swapping back and forth from each other or being one and then the other. So it would have like a quick flash of the male and the female main character in this story. And later on in the um, video, you'll notice that each character is kind of synonymous with each other as it would be in the game where the if you choose a girl you're going to go through the same story as the guy would if you choose the guy you're going to go through the same story as the girl would there's no difference so just switching them out really doesn't change any sort of feel of the scene and keeps it sort of um inclusive i guess to each person because if they only showed the guys the, the people who played as the girls maybe wouldn't have that connection with the story and i think they did it pretty well in this we get this awesome visual of like a bunch of the I guess the major, all of them are pretty major, but elite four members with like Lance and then Steven and then Wallace into Cynthia, my personal favorite, Iris, and then Di Diana. I sometimes forget her. As these champions are being shown, the line, this line that I really relate to is said, it says, we're a long way from where we want to go. I think that is the most relatable line for a lot of Pokemon fans because that sort of describes Pokemon at least the games, I suppose, uh, to us. Like, we're a long way from where we want to go. Like, this is nice and all, but you always hear people talk about, like, Pokemon, the game it could have been, like, Pokemon Sword and Shield, how it could have been. Like, like this is, we're a long way from where we actually want to be. Like, we want this, we want that. There's so many things you could do to make this game so much better. But we're still going there, I guess, and that's also sort of part of the journey connection where we are still got a long way to go. we still got more journeys to go on to. And then they kind of wrap it up with, but I could stay here for the rest of my life. And I think that is also very relatable for people in the Pokemon community because on one side of things, there's people who are very upset with where Pokemon's at and some people who are sort of less upset and don't see it as a big deal and think they could be, if Pokemon games were like this forever, they would be happy because this is what they like and i can definitely sympathize with that as well you could also think of it as the thought of i could stay here for the rest of my life where even though 
people complain about maybe the original red like the original red's full of bugs it's like you don't have the running shoes it's slow but yet like yada yada like whatever they have complaints about it people still like realize that i look at this game and there's a long way to go for making this game good but some people will still go back and play that original red rather than trying to play Let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee, Kanto again, or even Fire Red. Some people prefer the original Red over any other Pokemon game. And so I think that relates to this line of like, I could stay here for the rest of my life and I could be fine with this. But there is still a long way we have to go from here. And that's kind of being hopeful for the future of Pokemon, which I find super cool. Like, throughout the generations, it's not technically, it's not really an order, but it shows this journey. And we also go through all these generations after this, where we have the Gen 5 and the Gen 4 trainers fighting each other, because those two were kind of the more, com they added a lot more competitive items and abilities and weather and different stuff to the game, which is like kind of why they're fighting, which I, I found interesting. Uh, and then you have that like progression of black and white to black and white too, and you have this awesome, like amazing, like Mewtwo's the OG man, but you got Mewtwo fighting against the female main character of X and Y with a Greninja. Like, it's just absolutely sick. And then this is one of the points where I was like, okay, the person who's making this like really knows how to compare and contrast things because Damn, they pull out the Sun and Moon, and the Sun and Moon, and they also really know Pokemon. Like, the person who made this knows Pokemon, knows the feel. Sun and Moon comes out, and it's super lighthearted, light, fun. Everybody's chilling, doing little dance, and then cuts to Gen 5. N and the main character just staring each other down. All serious. Everything's, d like, dead-eyed, blank, as they stare at each other. The reflection of each other's eyes showing Reshiram and Zekrom respectively behind them. As you kind of just realize, like, this is the final battle. Like, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy. It's It was this beautiful, like, whole, like, caught me off guard. And then it kind of cuts to more of these, like, epic battles. You see Silver do the little turnaround as if you're gonna go fight Silver. And then you have Wally show up to fight the Emerald Gen 3 main characters. You have Blue fighting Red in the Elite Four as champion. And then you have Gold fighting Red on top of Mount uh, Mount Silver. And this red, red fight is so cool because the amount of detail they put into this is like, honestly watch this on like half speed because you will, you will see so much more stuff. Like Silver is drenched in sweat. You can see globs of it flying off as he throws out Ampharos. And it just, and Ampharos just sends out this discharge that hits everything and knocks Red's hat off. And it's just this, this when it calms down and kind of falls and it lands on Pikachu's head. And you have to think at least that's significant because why would they do that? And that Ash Cap retains itself throughout the entire song and the entire video. That Pikachu retains that, uh, not that Ash Cap, the Red Cap, Red. <laughs> Sorry. And so we have this sort of, it also makes point of how significant it is because they cut the song or cut the lyrics. They just kind of chill for a little bit and you just, and you just kind of sit in that moment. And then as we move along, we go through, finally, we've made it to Galar, right? And you go and see every trainer in order of how you fight them with the two uh, exclusive typings, fighting ghost and rock and ice being on the same sort of show up screen so you go through like each type and then those two are together respectively and then you like move your way up past Raihan to Leon with again that journey you go through where you have to fight all the gym leaders to finally reach the champion and I think that's super like powerful and really well made and then you go through your rivals and the people again I feel like they know at least the fans or, or the culture behind Pokemon right because Marnie's looking cute as heck and then we got Hop with this awesome visual of his team which he's got a Rillaboom and they keep continuity pretty good in this video because because Hop has a Rillaboom, Leon has an Italian, and the main character of Sword and Shield, your playable character, has a Score Bunny. And if that's what would happen, Hop would have a Rillaboom, Leon would have an Italian, and you would have a, uh, a Cinderace. So it, it makes sense, and it's really cool that they made sure to keep that in there when they could have easily just put in any type. And this is one of my favorite personal scenes. You really got to watch this one in slow motion because you have Hop with his team. Oh yeah, they're all hyped up. And then for like literally a uh, fire flashes and for like literally a second, Leon's team appears and it's that like, it's, I love this scene and this visual because of how 
the sort of journey of like, Leon started as Hop, and that's what Hop wants to achieve is to be like Leon. And so you have that kind of connection, that flash of this is Hop, his younger brother, this is Leon, this is where he started to like where he ended. And, and Mr. Rhyme looking snazzy as heck. I don't know what's up with this Mr. Rhyme, but I absolutely love it. <laughs> like this dude put so much like whoever made this put so much personality into every single scene It's amazing and then you get this epic one-on-one -on -one Gigantamax Cinderace versus Gigantamax Charizard final showdown and we get this flash of light, right? And Leon's hat flies up in the air very similar to how Leon's hat gets He throws it off at the end of Sword and Shield and it lands on the Eevee's head very much like how gold knocked off Red's hat we knocked off Leon's, Leon's hat as well and so now the Eevee, it landed on the Eevee much like it landed on the Pikachu. Finally, our two main characters meet for the first time. And uh, they finally realize, hey, you've got my Pikachu, I've got your Eevee, here you go, let's swap. Uh, the, the girl, the happy as she's always been, and the guy very frustrated as Pikachu, and they, they swap Pokemon. And this is also kind of a fun little scene where all the professors are showing up. And honestly, the little details are so fun because I love that Kukui and Professor Realm, the thought that they're friends chilling in the background. Kukui, the very like extroverted, loud, exciting, sort of like Chad, I guess. And Professor Elm, sort of the nerdy, quiet, like scared dude who's not super out there being friends. I love that like contrast dynamic. And then the compare dynamic of Professor Rowan and Professor Magnolia in the back, kind of like annoyed at the the younger generation, I guess, of, uh, of professors. Though Professor Oak really should be the oldest at this point, right? But Professor Rowan's probably the oldest, I feel. I don't know. But those two kind of older characters that look more like stern and more serious are kind of just like on looking and really upset. <laughs> we get to see all the stars with the three newest ones at the front and center. The two walk off together onto the next adventure, the two main characters that we have with their hats. So they, one has Red's hat and has his Pikachu back and the other has Leon's hat and has her Eevee back. And I think those two ideas are very, very important. I might be tinfoil hatting this, but I, I think I think if you bear with me, I can explain some stuff. Also again, little uh, little hints, Subway guys from Black, Black and White 2, I believe. And then the, I believe those are the Battle Sisters from X and Y. I could be wrong and you guys could correct me. I'm not gonna research it. Just little fun Easter eggs, I guess. I don't really know why they're there. After all this, we end off this wonderful experience with Mew flying through the air, a trainer waving at us before throwing a Pokeball, maybe trying to catch that Mew. I wanna talk about the significance of Pikachu, Eevee, and the hats, because I really think that there is a, like a serious significance and a reason they put it in. I don't think they just put it in because, oh, Red, oh, Leon, oh, Pikachu, oh, Eevee, you know? I don't think they just put it in because, that. Ah, let's just put it in. I think there had to be a reason, and you guys could think that, no, they just put it in. Eevee's the newest mascot of Pokemon Pikachu's the mascot, Leon's the latest uh, Elite Four champion, Red was the main character synonymous with Pikachu like it's just yeah you know, it's just a thing they just put it in showing it they also could just be showing the journey between the generations from the beginning to the end and I think that is part of it but I also want to kind of tinfoil hat it a little bit more and you guys could think no I think this is going a little bit too far but I want you to look and remember the personality that the personalities that stayed consistent throughout the entire video of the two main characters that we had with the Pikachu and the Eevee. The boy was very sort of begrudgingly going on this adventure, kind of just angry, like upset, not really super enjoying it. And the girl is hip, just hip hop it is skipping in jumping in with her eevee and rolling around not really caring just enjoying everything that's happening to her like even her eevee's getting destroyed she doesn't even care she's just walking around and so i think that this is showing the the difference in how the pokemon community and the fans view pokemon Repre uh the man the guy represents the people who think pokemon is going down a bad path you know like they're becoming more handholdy the people who are upset about losing the national decks and Pokemon not being able to be transferred up, people just being upset about how Pokemon is now and more wants it to go back maybe to how Pokemon was or just completely go different direction. And I think that sort of like mentality is very synonymous with something that 
people in the Pokemon community call a Gen 1-er, which is a person who is always like, Gen 1 was the best generation. Nothing can compare. Like, some people genuinely feel that way, but I think that by using Red's cap and Pikachu, the original sort of main character of Pokemon, the Gen 1 character, putting him with this guy who is very upset and very angry, I think is sort of representing the older and more angry generation or side of the Pokemon company or the Pokemon fan base and using that to sort of represent them. Because some people could be like, I hated Gen 1, but Gen 4 was the best. You know, there's a lot of Gen 4s, there's a lot of Gen 5s, there's a lot of Gen 3s. Everybody has their Gen that's their favorite, and they say that it's gotten worse ever since then. Gen 1-er has been kind of a meme, sort of, necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily, but sort of a meme in Pokemon is a lot more known throughout the Pokemon community. If I said, oh, you're a Gen 4, they'd just be like, oh, you're just making like a, a saying off the Gen 1-er. Like, Gen 1-er was the original. But enough with that. Now we have this girl with Eevee and Leon's cap. And I think she represents the fans that are sort of, don't see things as a big deal. Like, they don't see these changes as a big deal. Like, um, who cares? Not all Pokemon can get transferred. I want to play with the new Pokemon. Who cares? I don't care if it's handholdy. I just want to have a fun experience, you know? Like, a, another valid side. Both sides are obviously valid here. Rep they represent that with Leon's Cap, the latest generation's champion, and Eevee, the sort of newer mascot to Pokemon that only sort of recently in these couple of years has become sort of a mascot. And becoming part of Let's Go Eevee. Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. Let's Go Pikachu is sort of tailored. The Pikachu is sort of tailored maybe to more of the Gen 1 style people who played it as a kid. And uh, Eevee is more of the new kids coming into the block and wanting Eevee is super cute, super adorable. So I think that the, the reason they chose these designs and the way the, the Pokemon they have with them is because they wanted to show that there is one side of the Pokemon community that is frustrated there's another side of the pokemon community that is happy with what's how's it how it's going but i also think there's this part where no matter what we're still moving forward even though the guy is really upset and sort of kind of annoyed and tired and just dragging his feet he's still moving forward there is at no point where that guy turns back and walks back home he continues moving forward because that's kind of how the Pokemon fan base is. They may complain, they may get angry, they may shout, they may shake an Eevee every once in a while, but they usually, like, at least for me, I don't know about you guys, I tend to end up still moving along with Pokemon and going and following this journey, following this journey hoping that it will get better, even if it doesn't, you know? And I think it also ends on a really kind of hopeful note, at least for me, with these two generations of pokemon players and two sides of the community walking into the distance together kind of symbolizing to me at least that we're in this together no matter what side of like if you're national dex to anti-national dex who cares like either side you are we're together and we're we have to kind of deal with the situations we have together and no matter what we are the pokemon community and we're being a Pokemon fan, no matter how different your upbringing or where you, what you look like, what you wear, you are part of this community and you are one of us. And that's what I think this kind of story is about, about two people who are completely different, who go on it the same journey and can relate to each other and have and become unlikely friends and end up walking, <laughs> walking away with each other and can end up leaving in the sunset together. And I think that's super cool. And I think this is just it this is everything pokemon is to me i think this music video and it's insane like it's so good i've listened to this so many times and it impresses me every single time and i just had to talk about it <laughs> i just had to so hopefully this isn't super cringe hopefully i unpause the recording i did and hopefully i can edit this because i haven't even uploaded in like two weeks uh as of right now so Hopefully you guys enjoyed and let me know your thoughts. Do you think I'm absolutely crazy that like this is just a Pokemon anime opening and it's just they just put things in that happen to happen? Or do you think or do you agree with like things I said? Do you think or have noticed things different towards me? Like maybe you looked at something completely different. I would love your guys opinion. I love this song and this video. It's so good. And uh, yeah, there are some things in this video that I talked about that I 
or that I've left out from my big analytical read of everything. So I might know something that you point out and go, oh, hey, did you notice this? I might still know that, but feel free to tell me anyways. And I'll say, yeah, I did notice that. And we can talk about it in the comments if you even want to. If not, I hope you just enjoyed and I hope you go watch the video if you haven't, because it's so good. It, it gets hype. It's hype, dude. <laughs> so see you guys next time.